Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Hey folks, how are you doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. Today is going to be a fun day for me. It's the first day in moving the shop. It's my third major shop move and um, I don't like it. I don't think anyone does. It's kind of stressful, a lot of annoying busy work. Uh, you know, you, you, you built a nice creative space to work in and now you have to tear it all down and start over. The, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is much, much brighter than it is here. So I know that it's gonna be fun when it's all said and done. But we just just gotta just have to get there you know so when i moved to this shop one of my strategies for packing up all the smaller stuff was to put them put everything in 55 gallon drums the 55 gallon barrels and while that's good in the sense that it's almost like an unlimited weight capacity there's nothing that i could physically put into a 55 gallon drum from my shop that would damage the drums that they just couldn't handle it so they were definitely not the weakest link moving everything here. The weakest link, however, was getting those three and 400 pound barrels moved around. I was like, ah, oh, just use a, you know, a two wheel hand dolly or a two wheel uh, appliance dolly. That was still kind of a chore with, with all the weight. So this time I'm going to do something different. I purchased a pallet jack and this time I wanna make stackable crates that I can move around with the pallet jack as well as with uh, forks on the front of a tractor when we get to the first destination. So we have an in-between destination for this property move. Uh, we're moving all of the shop contents and whatever's left in the house into a shipping container, uh, which will be parked next to our camper on some relatives land, which is eight minutes away from our property as we develop the property and get the shop built. So we have a in-between kind of a move. Uh, so I need to jump into the computer, jump into SketchUp and figure out what these crates are actually going to look like. Here in SketchUp, I want to visit a previous project that I made first. And that's because I made this project, this little garage bin for sports equipment and all kinds of other stuff, basically a garage catch-all. I made this out of Advantech flooring, three quarter inch Advantech flooring. And it worked out really, really well. All of these joints were perfect. The, the, the fit was great. And that's because I used a very specific thickness. If I zoom in deep dimension, what was my material thickness? 0 0.730 was my material thickness. And that's the number I need to use this Advantech flooring on the project that I wanna make now. So let's go to file new, don't save my changes. And here's something that's very, very annoying about SketchUp. When you open up a new file, that origin is not pinned anywhere and it's not centered so if you orbit around to try and get a different view of the axes it goes absolutely crazy it's nuts it's, it's annoying so anyway shift z is zoom extents and if there's nothing in the model it'll simply pin the origin to the middle so after shift z yay the origin doesn't move i don't know why it's not like that by default but anyway little annoyance with SketchUp there Let's draw the bottom of this crate, right? These uh, shipping container crates. R for rectangle from the origin, this direction, 44 comma 44, enter. Now I've already kind of figured this out in my head, just logically thinking here. 44 inches is about half a sheet of plywood, right? Or Vantac flooring. So that leaves me with the other half to divide once again and get two side panels. So one bottom, two sides, and then the next sheet will be the top and the other two sides. So two sheets per box. And I think 44 is the perfect uh, size here. Let's go P for push pull. Let's pull this up 0.73. Remember that 0.73 inches, enter, spacebar, triple click, G for component, enter. And I always drop colors on here. I like contrasting colors just for visual clarity. So 44 inches, I think is the perfect dimension for this because if I grab this M for move control brings up copy, and it's 44 wide, I go 46, enter. This gives me an outside to outside measurement of 90 inches with two inches in the middle. Well, I just searched online and a standard interior width for a shipping container is about 93.6 inches. I'm trusting the internet on this one. I hope it's okay. <laughs> but if it's 93.6, this gives me about an inch and a half on this side, two in the middle and about an inch and a half on this side. So. That should be plenty enough room to wiggle these into place and drop them. 
This will allow me to do two side by side and then two stacked on top of one another for a tremendous amount of just absolutely pack these things tight kind of storage, right? Anything and everything that can fit in there, pack it super, super, super tight. Uh, this is just storage to get the shop moved and then at a later date, uh, I could use these boxes for firewood or, or something different. So let's control Z twice to back up. I don't need two of these just yet. And let's grab, let's start with the side actually. R for rectangle from this corner over here and I'm not on the correct plane. So I can cycle through my keyboard arrows to figure out what plane I need to be on. Left for green, right for red. Um, and if I just drop my mouse cursor off where it's at, so that it pops up that text endpoint in component one, that will allow me to go vertical and snap to that endpoint. So if you look at the bottom right corner of the screen, the dimensions show the first dimension is pinned at 44. And I can modify the second one by pressing comma. Uh, let's see, half a sheet of plywood divided by two, a little bit of leeway, so 24 minus one. Let's go with 23 inches, enter. P4 push pull, let's push this this way. 0.73, enter, spacebar, triple click, G4 component, enter. Let's find a different color, a little contrasting color, just for it to visually pop. And this is a four-sided symmetrical box, so it's easy to just press L for line and draw a diagonal corner to corner so that I can get a midpoint. Select this side piece, Q for rotate, and snap to this midpoint, start rotating. Press Control to bring up copy, 90, enter for 90 degrees, X3, enter for times three. So now I have all my sides built. Let's click this diagonal and yeah, I, don't, I might need that again, but I'm gonna delete it anyway. <laughs> click the bottom panel, M for move, control brings up copy, select this top face, press up to constrain to the blue axes and drop that copy off right on the top. So all of these pieces are conflicting uh, as far as sharing that same physical space, but that's okay, I'm, I'm using CNC box joints for all of this. And um, that's just fine. So how much material do we need? Well, we've already figured that out, but just to just to give myself a layout, M for move, control brings up copy. Let's copy all this over to here. And truthfully, I don't need to copy all of it. I need to delete all but one side and the bottom. Grab this, Q for rotate, press left to constrain to the green. If I go to this corner, not that one, nope. Q, left, right here. Now I can do 90, enter. And I need two side panels per sheet. So grab this, M for move, control brings up copy. There's two right there. R for rectangle from this corner and drag it in this direction. And the dimensions in the lower right say that the first one is the larger of the two. So 96 comma 48, enter, spacebar, click the area, delete, triple click the end. Actually, in this case, there is no area. So you just double click, G for component, enter. This is my sheet of plywood. And if I go to a top-down view, I can, you know, kind of somewhat center this. No big deal. M for move. Grab this midpoint and drop it off at that midpoint. And then yeah, center it left and right. That's fine. And the reason why this is convenient for this to not take up a full sheet is because I'm going to cut this out on the CNC just for the box joints. And I need the corners available to screw this piece of plywood or, or Advantech flooring to my machine. Also, I can't go the full width anyway because Advantech comes in tongue and groove uh, the long edges on Advantech flooring are tongue and groove, long, narrow faces. So let's move this over, say, one inch, enter, grab this, move this over one inch. Yeah, that's plenty enough room. That's all I really need to do. But that's only half of the crate. M for move, control brings up copy, this direction, 50 inches, enter. There you go, two pieces per crate. What else am I going to need? I'm going to need two by fours. So let's go to the bottom right here, R4 rectangle from here two here and the dimensions in the lower right say that the first one is that pinned 44 inch dimension so comma 3.5 enter space bar oh i almost turned it into a component <laughs> p for push pull let's pull this down 1.5 enter space bar triple click now i can press g for component enter and give this some color what color have i not used yet green is fine uh let's go with a different green just for a little bit darker contrast there we go M for move, control brings up copy, and I think I'm going to have to stack two of these in order to get uh, three inches of height to put the pallet jack underneath it. Space bar, select this one as well. M for move, control brings up copy. Um, there to there, divided by two, enter, and that's basically the bottom side of the crate. And I think this is important because 
I'm gonna have two different forces at play here. When I stack these on top of one another, so that when the next crate gets stacked on top, you're gonna have that downward pressure on the ends, in the middle, and on the, well, uh, yeah, both sides and in the middle. That's different than when I pick this up from below, because when I pick this up from below, the pallet forks, pallet jack forks, are going to be about right here and about right there. So I don't, basically I need to make the top and bottom opposite of one another, I think. So, yeah, I think I do need to do that. So let's grab this bottom and just one of these, right click and say make unique. While they are both selected, let's change the color to something drastically different. There we go. And now whatever I do to this one, it'll update to there. And whatever I do to this one, it'll update over there. Good deal. So now let's, um, let's draw our joints, our joinery. And again, whatever I do to these will update over there as well. So I'm gonna edit one of these out in space. As I'm editing a component, I'm not sure if I said this or not, I can press Y as a custom keyboard shortcut to hide the rest of the model while I'm editing. Super handy to do that every now and then. And I'm gonna select this vertical edge. M for move control brings up copy from here to here. That did nothing, but if I press divided by three, enter, it divides that span into three equals, equal distances. Uh, that's cool. Let's grab this interior face right there. M for move control brings up copy. Let's just drop it off on the back side. P for push pull. Uh, I think that's still selected, so let's click away from that. P for push pull. Let's push this in by the material thickness of 0.73, enter. And double click to repeat our last push pull command. We did the outside, so let's go on the opposite side over here and do the inside. Let's double click. Ah, wrong direction. Now let's go this way, 0.73, enter. And now each one of these side pieces has a left and a right. And because I rotated all these all the way around, they should all be perfect. There we go. There's our joinery for the sides. Now the top joinery. On the top, remember the, the downward force is gonna be on the sides, on the middle, and on this side again. So what I want is I want these runners to basically not touch the sides. I don't want them to be setting on the end of the vertical sides because this the, the, whatever's left on the top could sag. Um, yeah, let me let me double click that at this part. Let's grab this vertical face right there. M for move control brings up copy. This is a little bit longer than those sides, so rather than divided by three, let's get the next highest odd number divided by five, enter. That looks fine. Let's grab this face, hold shift this and this face, and Q for rotate. Actually, you know what? Here's that diagonal line trick again. There we go. Q for rotate from this midpoint, this way, pressing control to make it a copy. 90 degrees, enter, X3, enter. Click and delete this diagonal. I guess that would have been more handy to do before I made this a unique component. That way all of that geometry was done once again, but oh well. So I want to keep this, the corners on, on this particular one. P for push pull, let's double click to, ah, wrong direction. Let's push this in, 0.73, enter. Now we can double click because we are pushing inward and it should continue all the way around. Let's double click to push it inward all the way around. Double click to repeat the last push pull command and there we go. So now I can double click one of these side panels, press Y to see the rest of the model. And basically wherever the uh, red is sticking through, I need to limit it, eliminate that on the yellow. So from here to here, a uh, rectangle from here to here, and then from here to there. Uh, P4 push pull, let's push this in, double click to, to repeat, double click. And now the entire top perimeter should be done perfectly. It looks like it is. Once again, we need to do that to the bottom, but let me just show you how that, that doesn't work. Let's move this. Uh, I'm gonna delete it and then just back up. Now let's move this. M for move, control brings up copy from there, pressing up to constrain down there. So let's just say that we did the top and bottom identical. Well, the, the side piece continues all the way up through the top and then it'll continue all the way down to the bottom. If I put my forks under here, it would it's putting all the pressure on the, the end of this side piece and not through the bottom panel first. 
And that's kind of a problem because let's just say I attack this from the opposite side. So I'm, I'm, I'm approaching from the back side here. And if I move this, let's just say it doesn't go all the way to the end. I just stop right there and start lifting up. Well, if I'm lifting up right here, this bottom panel is, is essentially going to sag inward just a little bit, not much, essentially sag inward. And I don't want that. Well, how do we eliminate that? Well, we don't pick up on one of these. We pick up next to this spot over here where the bottom panel in this orientation is all the way through the side, right? I guess it'd make more sense if I just spin the model around upside down. There we go. Let's just say the bottom is like that. Now, if I, hopefully you're tracking, tracking this with me here. Now, pretend this is the bottom. If I pick up right here, you see how this bottom panel is going to sag inward versus if I pick up right here, it's not going to sag at all. It's fully supported by the side. So I need to reverse the opposite of the top, which is the bottom, to accommodate that. I hope I didn't confuse anyone there. I uh, guess it really wasn't explained that well. So now it's back up and I have my other piece in place. So let's draw the joinery on the outside of this. Press Y to have everything else. Once again, we'll just draw a diagonal from here to here. Grab this vertical piece right here. M for move. Control brings up copy from there to there. Divided by five, enter. Select this area, this area, this area. Q for rotate on this top and along the midpoint. Pressing Control to bring up copy. 90 degrees, enter, X3, enter. And now I can delete this. Remember, we, we pushed, we, we kept the corners on the top, so now we need to push in the corners on the bottom. This direction, 0.73, enter. And I can double click to repeat my last push-pull command. Uh, the end, the center, and then the end, the end, center, and then the end, and then the end, center, and then the end. Click to get out, and now, I just need to add the bottom cutouts on the side panel. So let's double click to edit this part. Y to bring up the rest of the model. R for rectangle from here to there, from there to there. P for push pull, and I should be able to just double click and it goes away, double click. There we go, and these are all component copies, so it updates all the way around. I do believe that is gonna work. I do believe that's it. So I also need to I guess let my, myself know how many two by fours. So let's grab one of these, Q for rotate. Just drop, uh, control brings up copy. Drop it off 90 degrees, enter, M for move. Let's grab this corner and drop it off to that corner. Grab a top down view, zoom out a little bit. M for move, control brings up copy. And I'm gonna copy this one over to there. And that is one two by four. Let's move this down a little bit. M for move, control brings up copy. One right there, X to enter. So. Basically, it's one two by four, two two by fours, three two by fours per crate. All right, so this is how much material I need. I need three two by fours by eight, and then two pieces of Vantec flooring per crate. So each one of these crates is going to be about $105. That's right there is $90 or 95, um, and then about 10 or so. So about $110-ish, depending on tax and whatnot, per crate. And I'm going to build four of these. So that's kind of an expensive storage solution. But at the same time, uh, I will be able to use these long-term for whatever. And I'm mainly thinking firewood and, and other long-term stack and store kind of stuff. So that's basically it. Now I've got to go get materials and actually make these. So Anyway, hopefully you learned something from watching this SketchUp tutorial. If you are interested in more SketchUp videos, just search my channel, search my website for SketchUp. I've got a bunch of them. And I just think SketchUp is fantastic. It's a wonderful tool for woodworkers and all kinds of other makers. And yeah, I just love SketchUp. It's great. You guys take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you in the next video.